if you drive long enough in Los Angeles, you are bound to get into a crash. And more often than not, it's probably a rear end job. And that's what happened to our Tesla Model Y performance. I'm gonna take you through our interesting journey. All right, so on a recent road trip on our way uh, home from San Diego, back up to Los Angeles, uh, we had a little uh, interesting encounter. And of course I have it on sentry mode. I will give you a tip. If you are in a crash, please be mindful in that first 10 minutes of the incident, honk your horn. I obviously have that setting set up on your, uh, your Tesla as well, but honk your horn. So sentry mode will in fact save the last 10 minutes of uh, when this incident occurred to you and you will have it. It will be locked in, it can't be overwritten and you can grab it later at a later date. Um, I was mindful of that around minute seven or eight of this incident when we pulled over to the side and I'm th thinking, you know what? I wanna have this saved. So I hit the horn, sure enough, I have all the footage and it uh, actually came in handy. Uh, so we're on our way home from San Diego, we're in the carpool lane, we're humming along pretty nicely and I notice up ahead, everybody's slowing down. So I slow down and they do not have a look. Oof, hurts just watching it. I know, I know it's, it's rough. But at the end of the day, the driver did slow down enough to where there wasn't too much damage. Uh, my assessment of it is it was a pretty light tap. Uh, in fact, my kids, I had my whole family in the car. I had uh, my uh, mother-in-law in the car, my kids, my wife, everybody were all on our way home from San Diego, like I said. And the impact was so light that actually my older son said, were we just in a crash? And I had to yeah, say, yeah, we did, because we didn't really feel anything in the car. Um, we had a little jolt, very slight. It wasn't uh, too big of a deal. Um, it was, I don't know if I inherently let my foot off the brake slightly to let the car roll a little bit, but I think it did lunge forward. And I think that helped with the impact of the two vehicles. Um, but the driver slowed down enough. It was a younger driver. Uh, I'm not gonna give any details away uh, besides that. Uh, younger driver, uh, fairly new, three years, four years driving. Um, I'm not gonna say that was the cause of the accident. I mean, this could have happened to anybody. Partially, we were in the Y. I could see up ahead further, so a case could be made for having SUVs for sure. And I saw it happening probably sooner than they did. And I was able to slow down in time, and they weren't, as a matter. I, they could have been looking away for a half second. It happened fast. It wasn't one of those things where they just slammed into me. Clearly, they figured out that they had to brake because at the end of the day, the damage was just the rear reflector on the right side. Now, you're going to see some scratches on the, the lower bumper as well. I'll show you photos of all that. But there was no painted damage, no, nothing. I mean, if they had to hit a spot on the car, they picked the perfect spot on the car uh, to hit because I'm okay with the plastic damage. And I'm gonna tell you why in a second. The reflector, eBay to the rescue. <laughs> I found the reflector. Uh, and I think, we're gonna, we're gonna show you the video here in a second, but I think it was OEM. So um, let's get into that actually. Let's talk about the reflector. Let's remove the old one, pop in the new one, and I'll get back to you as to why I decided to not do much else. All right, so you can see the uh, damaged area here. Um, Clearly the reflector is broken here. Um, there's a little bit of, of a plastic dent here and some scratches here. There's a tiny little dent here. But all in all, I think once we replace this reflector, um, it's gonna be fine. Uh, at the end of the day, it's kind of about that Carfax, right? You don't want this uh, showing up on Carfax as uh, having been in a crash, especially when it's something so minor. Um, at the end of the day, you know, this entire bumper would need to re be replaced because I've seen other YouTube videos that, um, this whole bumper, including this plastic part is all one piece. So that whole thing would need to be replaced. Um, and to do that, you'd have to go to a shop and, um, yeah, there's definitely some plastic damage here, but 
uh, I, I'm okay with it. It's um, one of those things, a diminished value. With the recent price cuts <laughs> Tesla announced, man, that hurts. Um, I don't really want the value of the car to go down even further because it's uh, so-called been in a wreck when it's something so minor. Um, you saw the, the, the video footage. It's, um, it was barely a tap. So anyway, let's remove this. I um, have no idea how. I'm going to kind of wing it here with you. I don't care if I break stuff because it's already broken. Oh, by the way, I have the replacement here. So this is the replacement. Um, got it from eBay. No idea if, it, if it's OEM, but it looks pretty official here. It says OEM. That could just be the OEM part number here that they're uh, listing that it replaces. Uh, has their part number. Tesla Model Y reflector right. That's what this, uh, this R means right there. Um, and this is definitely the right one. So we're going to hopefully pop this in later. Let's get this uh, other one off. And that's what we're replacing with. By the way, $10. I think it was $10.95. For, uh, I think I'm going to need something other than this tool, though. Um, 1095 to replace this part. So I have never done this before. I'm kind of doing this along with you. Um, best as I can tell, there's the reflector part on the top and then a plastic backing. So I'm going to need to, um, you can see it here on the uh, replacement. There's, it's like... It's like a double piece. It's got the reflector on the top and the black part on the bottom, and it's fused together somehow. At any rate, I think I'm going to need to get some better tools for this. Hang on. All right, I got some various different kinds of tools here. I want to kind of stay away from metal. And uh, This is plastic, so I don't really want to uh, deal with something metal. This one looks like it might be able to wedge its way in there. And I was right. Okay, so we got that piece off. Again, still don't know how I'm going to get this backing part off. All right, reflector off. It's almost like glass, the way it shards. It's pretty weird, even though it's plastic. I am wearing glasses. I know that's not protective in any way, but hopefully it helps a little bit. So now, looking at the piece that it's replacing, there's that. So this goes this way, so the clip is here somewhere, it looks like. So somehow I need to pinch that and get this open and lift it up. It looks like it's lifting this way. Let me see if I can get a credit card under there. Oh. Hmm. Again, don't want to do any more damage that than it was there. Something is right here. What is that? Again, this needs to go in this way. Yeah, there's a little clip right here, and then there's this clip here. So that needs to slide out. Okay, let's try that. So I need to pull this out. Yeah, and that's exactly it. Helps to have the uh, replacement handy to, to see what it looks like. And then the actual clip is right here. And that might take a little doing here. Because I can't get in there to squeeze um, the clip out. This is going to probably need to take some brute force. Oh, I can see. Um, yeah, the piece I have here is not OEM because the OEM piece has everything on a car has, is, is numbered and stuff. And there's a label on it here. I think I'm going to go get some gloves. I always keep my uh, batting gloves handy from when I was uh, an adult baseball league because it gives you a little fine motor skill stuff. It's not like the gardening gloves you can get at Home Depot or whatever. But at the end at the end of the day, it can protect my hands from any plastic. Oh, I heard something good there. Something pop. Not as easy as I thought it would come out. I can see where it's supposed to go, and I can see that it's a clip like this, uh, this here, and it's holding on pretty good. Um, and I have a feeling putting it back in is going to be fairly easy. Um, just got to get this clip part off. Wow, that is in there good. Okay, I can see the clip now. So, I wonder if I can get a screwdriver in there just to mess with the pin. Okay, well, that part broke. That's not good. I think that there's a little tab in there I can mess with. All right, again, trying to stick with the plastic theme here. 
and not use a screwdriver. Well, that's broken. That makes it a little harder. And I got it. No, oh, Siri, I'm good. Thanks. All right, so I got the clip out. You can see it right here. That is definitely the clip uh, that we're dealing with, and it looks identical to the piece that I got here. So if this piece, this um, reflector is not OEM, it's pretty darn close. So now I'm going to take um, one of these plastic things and kind of clean the area of any of the reflector material that's here. I can see a, piece, a few pieces of red here. Um, but overall, it looks like the area is good to go. I didn't do any further damage, which is good. Even though I did some brute force, probably not ideal. But I can definitely see. Oh, you know what you can see behind here is the actual bumper. Um, interesting. I'm going to grab, where's my phone? I don't know where my phone is. I was going to get a flashlight in there, but you could see the actual bumper, the not the bumper cover, but the actual bumper of the car that does all the safety work. Uh, hang on, let me get my phone. Knowing what I know now, seeing the bumper back here and seeing how minimal this impact was, I don't even believe the impact got to the bumper. It's far enough away from this bumper cover and knowing that the car that hit me, the uh, Chevrolet Volt, the only damage on that car, by the way, was the license plate frame holder. Um, so I think this is good to go. And I kind of have a good idea of how this is going to pop into place. So we're going to open this. Pretty easy. I'll leave uh, the down in the description, the um, shop I use, it's a parts shop um, on eBay. Normally, I really don't like to deal with eBay, but this place had a 100% approval rating. Um, reviews off the charts, so I decided to go with them, and uh, they delivered on what they promised. So, whether this is OEM or not, it's... Um, Definitely nice. I mean, good enough quality for this. I mean, once it's in place, I don't think I need to worry about it. So let's take a look here and compare. RH, that's good to see right here. Right hand, lens, lens, housing. You know what? I don't know. This might be OEM, made in Turkey, made in Turkey. Um, the only thing it's missing is the official sticker right here. This is the OEM one up here. So I, this may be an OEM, even though, I mean, all the markings are the same. RH with a one above it. It's got the greater than symbols there, less than. It says lens, P, M, M, A. I don't know what any of this means, but everything looks the same. Obviously, you can replicate stuff and make it look official and all that stuff. Let's look on the front here. There's some numbers and stuff. I don't know if the broken piece that I have here has all that. Yeah, I'm not seeing that right away. I don't see anything on it. But anyway, all right, let's pop this into place. And hopefully this will be fairly easy. So this has a little notch that goes into here. The hole here holds it in place. And then the clip is what pops it into place. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to do a... a a shift move to get this clip into here and then pop the rest into place. At least that's on paper how I think it's going to work. And this is not one of those things that I think you can... Uh... Okay, so that's lit into place. Perfect. This is going into place just fine. So if I pop this into place, that clip should just go right into place. That sounded good. Everything seems to be in place now, and I don't think that's going to come off. Yeah, I'm not hearing any further clicking, popping. It fit absolutely perfect into that spot. So now this is has been fixed. 
Um, so now, really, all we have from the, the, the accident is a few of these plastic scratches. And honestly, when you step away from a vehicle, that's really when you know if you've got some damage that uh, is not, you know, it's all your comfort level, what you are willing to deal with. And if you step five, ten feet away from this car, you're not going to see that. The reflector is perfect, is in place. Now I just got to clean up this mess. So the reflector was relatively painless to find online, relatively painless to receive. Uh, my suggestion to you, uh, if you do buy anything on eBay, look at the ratings, look at the reviews, look at all that stuff before you buy anything. This guy was off the charts having good reviews, so I felt pretty confident in the purchase. And sure enough, a few days later, it showed up. The part was correct. It was the right rear reflector for a Tesla Model Y, and uh, it just it fit perfectly, as you saw. So here's the reason. At the time of the accident, we couldn't have been more calm. Uh, my wife got out of the car. I got out of the car. We pulled over way to the side. You don't get out in the carpool lane and start sorting things out with cars whizzing by. Uh, you, you pull over. We got way off to the side, probably five car lengths off to the side from the freeway and got out of the car, took a look at the damage. Uh, it's been a while, a really long while since I was in a crash. I think I've only been in three crashes in my entire life, and that's a lot of driving. So it's been a while since we've been in a crash. I had to kind of collect myself in the car as to what to do next, what we're supposed to collect, what we're supposed to do. And now with modern technology, I mean, I think my last crash, we had to write everything down, <laughs> licenses and license plate, and we didn't have cameras with us and all this stuff. So now you just take pictures of everything, take pictures of their license plate, take pictures of your car, their damage, your our damage, the insurance on both sides and all that stuff. And even after all that, we forgot one thing. We forgot to exchange uh, each other's phone numbers so we can, you know, work this out. Uh, ultimately the person's dad contacted me by finding me through social media. Imagine that, um, it, which is, you know, a little easier these days. Everybody's online. You could probably find anybody you need. Uh, so they reached out and said, are you the person that was in an uh, accident with my, my kid? And, uh, we talked it out over chat. They thanked me so much for being uh, very cordial with their, their child and not being angry and being, considerate and understanding and all that stuff. And, you know, that's accidents happen. That's why we have insurance. Yes, it's an expensive car, but we both had insurance. Turns out we both had the same insurance. So the odds of it getting fixed properly are probably pretty good. But at the end of the day, uh, they said they would pay out of pocket. They didn't want to hit the insurance because as a new driver, their insurance would skyrocket with something like this. Uh, in California, if you get rear-ended, it's always the person behind you's fault. That's just the way it goes. It's too bad. I can understand there are some instances where that wouldn't be the case, but you'd have a hard time trying to justify it. There, there are times where, like if you're, you're humming along in the carpool lane, you're driving along, and someone crosses a double yellow in front of you, and you crash into them, technically you rear-ended them, but I could see a case be made that they shouldn't have crossed the double yellow. They're in the fault right there. And they weren't there a second ago. And, you know, that's 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 not really your problem. But that's another tangent. So we decided, after looking at the damage, after looking at how minor the impact was, basically we have a little few scratches on the plastic on the lower part of the bumper. Um, rear diffuser is what uh, the, the mods like to call them. And after looking at a few other YouTube videos, that plastic uh, por portion of the bumper is actually connected to the painted portion. So that whole bumper would need to be replaced. You can't really fix plastic. You can't, it, it's just, you can't do it. So uh, looking at the damage, looking at the fact that the reflector was the only thing broken, um, I decided to order that piece, pull it out, put a new one in, see what it looked like and, and evaluate from there. I should go back a second. Nobody was injured. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was had sore necks or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure some people would sue for this. That's just not me. It's another reason is I just didn't want to take the time. I didn't want to waste my time, their time. It's a lot of paperwork and hours on hold with the insurance company, all this stuff just to 
fix a bumper that, you know what, in Los Angeles, <laughs> the odds are pretty good that thing's going to get hit again and worse, and then we'll fix it, you know? So if you stand five, 10 feet away, I can't even see the scratches on the bumper. You really have to zoom in with a photo uh, to see around the, the circle part. You could see a scratch there and a little bit to the left of that. But at the end of the day, the only broken piece was the reflector. So I paid for that. The uh, guy, I texted him, I, I sent him a receipt of the, uh, the eBay uh, purchase. It was 14 something uh, and change. He's, I'll send you a check right away. <laughs> I mean, this could have been thousands of dollars. Had we decided, yeah, we want the whole bumper replaced. Uh, it's your fault. Too bad. That's just the way it goes. Eh, angry LA guy. Um, if we had gone that route, you know, it would have been a couple thousand bucks at the very least just to pull that bumper, put a new one on uh, because it's connected. And I don't think you can really fix that. So, you know, obviously he's going to pay the $15 all day long. I hope it's a karma thing. I've got a teenager, a 13-year-old. He's going to be driving sooner than I would like, a couple of years away from that. And I would hope that when he gets into an accident, and he will, um, everybody does at that age, I would hope that the other party will be as understanding as we were as well. And hopefully that comes back around. So that's the reason I decided to uh, not hit their insurance, not hit our insurance, would happen to be the same insurance. The other reason why is I didn't want the value of our car to go down. <laughs> it's already taken a huge hit thanks to Elon with dropping the prices recently, right? So I didn't want that to be on Carfax. I didn't want any record of that. The, the damage is so incredibly minimal. It's superficial. I didn't want that to have a diminished value on my car for something so small there are bigger fish to fry later on if, if it happens in a bigger way. Um, but in this case, I didn't, I could have, so if I had hit their insurance, our insurance, same insurance, whatever, they would have higher rates and I would have diminished value in the, in the sum of thousands and thousands of dollars when in fact it was a $15 repair. So next time you uh, get into a, a wreck like this and everybody does uh, just keep that stuff in mind, have a level head, um, think it through, Give it a couple days, a week, whatever. Don't react immediately and see what the options are. And, oh, last thing. So you now, now know why we went that route and all that other stuff. Just want to let you know, if you get into a crash, these are the things that we did. First of all, I told you earlier, make sure you honk your horn. Make sure actually before that, before you get into a wreck, go set the settings now. It's under, let's see, I think safety. And where is it? Safety. I thought it was honk horn on. Yes, under safety, uh, under dash cam, you want to have the uh, on honk blue. So do that right now. Okay. It just something let one less thing to think about. So do that. Then if if you get into a crash within that first ten minutes, uh, hopefully before that, hit the horn. You'll get the last ten minutes of your footage. And thankfully we did that because it wasn't to try to get the other person, but just wanted to see what the impact was like and see what we were dealing with and could there be damage beyond the bumper and in my opinion i don't think so so have that on hon honk thing ready um and that way when you hit it you'll get that sentry uh footage second take pictures of your car take pictures of the scene around you if you can get if you're on the freeway get the uh nearest exit signs the uh the weather at the time get the date and time these are all things insurance companies are going to want to know about. Get uh, pictures of their license, their insurance, exchange phone numbers. And like I said, just get an overall picture of the scene. You've got a phone with you with a high-end camera. Even take video, maybe. Um, if the other person gets belligerent, fire up your camera. Take video of it because that's not going to help them at all. You've got a mobile studio with you at all times. Use it to your advantage and uh, just kind of set the scene. The one mistake I made was we didn't exchange phone numbers, but luckily the uh, person found us. So there you go. If you get into a wreck, uh, think of all these things, uh, document everything, take pictures of everything. You really don't need to write anything down these days, so that's kind of cool. But um, there you go. That's what we decided to do with our Tesla Model Y performance. Pretty easy fix, 15 bucks, as you saw. And I hope this helps you out a little bit. Uh, just keep it in the back of your mind. If you get into a wreck, oh, I remember I needed to do this, 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 and this thanks to Tesla Tips and Trips, right? <laughs> so I just wanted to help you out with this particular instance. Generally speaking, if it 
has anything to do with our Tesla cars, whatever it is, a service appointment, a scratch, uh, washing it, we have all kinds of topics. We do everything and anything on this channel. So I figured I just wanted to you know, point this out. Spotify issues, we had that recently and uh, a fogged in fog light, go check out that video as well. So uh, we don't really have one set thing that we do on this channel, but uh, we do have a trip coming up. So keep an eye out for that. We're gonna be doing the LA to Mammoth again, but this time in the winter, we did it before on the in the Tesla Model Y performance, but in the summer. So this will be a little bit different, little things, different things happening. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, totally appreciate you joining us on the channel, over 5,300 uh, subscribers strong. If you're finding us for the first time, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell. Uh, that way you get our videos at any time. So I totally appreciate you joining us here on the channel and we'll catch you on the next one.